Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Shireen Kapoor, a Canadian immigration lawyer from Ace Law Barristers and Solicitors. And today I'm going to tell you about the program, a new program which has actually just recently been uh, in the market. And I'm sure that you have heard about it. The government of Alberta has recently announced some changes to the Alberta Express Entry System in which there is a program called Accelerated Tech Pathway under the Alberta Advanced Immigration Pathway System. So, in a broader category, this is a system, this is a program that has come under the Express Entry of Alberta and there are certain key requirements which we were able to evaluate and you know, that is why I made certain pointers and come out with this video and here it is in front of me and I'm going to discuss those pointers today with you of the program, how it is going to speed up your immigration and what is the direct uh, way of getting permanent residency through it and how it actually works what are the tips and tricks for the program that you have to be careful about so firstly let's discuss about the eligibility of this program who can apply now to apply under the advanced tech pathway obviously as the name suggests it is not not tech fields it is also non-tech fields which is very surprising that even though the name says it accelerated tech pathway there are certain knock codes which are not related to tech the thing the thing is that the whole program has been involved because Alberta government was unable to hire high skilled workers or high wage LMIA workers from federal system because of the uh, draws uh, being held. That is why Alberta thought that the, their economy needs such kind of high wage people and that is why they've come up, come up with this program. The eligibility criteria clearly states that you need to have first, you need to have this uh, federal express entry profile. You should be able to qualify under uh, CEC, FSW or any of the one of the streams FSW, FS3 or CEC. Your CRS should be a minimum of 300 and that is the basic criteria that you need. You need not obviously be a refugee claimant in Canada and all those kind of criminality and medical checks of course you need to have. These are the kind of eligibility requirements that is uh, that is uh, the program is wanting. The second thing is that there are adaptability factors when it comes to a province. Now adaptability factors can be from a friend and family to living there or it can be it varies province to province. It can be that you have a job offer, hai. it can be anything like that. Now Alberta Tech Pathway is basically more streamlined for people who are currently working for Alberta employers or who are getting a bona fide job offer from a Canadian employer. Now, what do you mean? This is my whole thing about. Now, what do you mean by a bona fide job offer? The bona fide job offer basically means that the job offer is full, continuous, 30 years given to you. If uh, if you require LMIA because you are a foreign national, then it's LMI approved. And all these things that are not impacting the market negatively. So, the job offer basically has to be a genuine job offer. And there is a check for genuineness, which in law is there for every kind of LMIA job offer under section 200 of IRPA. So, genuine, besides the genuine factor, who can be your employer? You also surprisingly can be your employer, but you have to keep in mind that not more than 10% of the voting shares should be of your name in the company. You can only be a, a shareholder of 10% voting shares and voting in non-voting shares or whatever. You have to just be mere, mere 10% holder, not more than that. Uh, and the job offer, obviously, as I told you, it has to be full, continuous and given to you for at least 30 hours per week. It has to be a full-time job offer. And you need to keep one very important thing in mind that the whole profile in your express entry submitted uh, should be uh, the primary uh, the primary occupation that you're putting of yours in your express entry profile should be relevant and should be matching to the uh, job offer that you've got. Now, for example, let's discuss the list that of knock codes that we have here. Now, if one person, Mr. Uh, X person is a civil engineer, has a profile of civil engineer in his express entry, making a minimum of 300 CRS score has now uh, used his primary occupation under NOC code 2131, which is for civil engineers. We need to show that the job offer from Alberta is also from the similar NOC. So if it is a different NOC, your profile will not be evaluated and will not be assessed. You will not get a, a nomination interest or expression of interest or nomination from that particular province. And that is what uh, from Alberta and that is what you have to be very particular in mind. 
The second thing is that you have to fill in the form of this AIP and uh, this tech pathway form you have to submit. After that, you are going to submit. After that, they are going to evaluate your profile from federal skilled worker from the sorry the express entry system, and that is when they will issue you a nomination. The third thing is very important that you have to keep in mind is that there is a certain criteria list of knock codes that are eligible and this list you can find a we will share the link in the description box of eligible it has one double o knock position of senior uh, manager in financial communication and other business services rest other are middle managers knock zero knock b these are the kind of categories they have given a list of classification of the occupations that are eligible for tech pathway and remember the tech pathway is for alberta only so your job offer should be from alberta the one of the other tips that i can give you and i'm pretty sure by way of experience i can tell you that your file will not be picked by the alberta government if it is more than 3 months old it's so if it's less than 3 months left for it to expire so as you know in the system your file is there for 1 year but if it is expiring within 3 months you need to keep it updated it is your responsibility to keep it updated and you need to renew it otherwise your profile can be jeopardized just because of the fact that it does not have any kind of validity left for them to issue you anything because nomination and all will take 3 to 6 months right so these are my tips and tricks and these are this is a very wonderful program that has come it's like alberta's own uh, owner operator program and it is very good it is very promising you can get in more details from us we are uh, we are working on it uh, your profile will we will evaluate your profile we will tell you if this program works for you and yeah what else do you want that in cover this whole processing time when it is getting taking a back seat and canada is welcoming welcoming all uh, refugees ukrainians everything from war crisis they are wel welcoming so obviously that means there is going to be a delay in processing times however this program since it is province Uh, uh, province and employer driven hence it is uh, more uh, streamlined and it is more promising in terms of timelines so cheers to all of you and if you have any other question about this program do put in the comment section i love to personally answer this you can follow us on our social media handles and yeah so we keep coming with all these videos and immigration tips and tricks thank you